I don't even know how many times I've filmed this intro so far now. Hey, hello, welcome to Months and Made This. My name is Michael. Normally you see me on here cooking vegan food, but today is gonna be a little bit different. The next week's gonna be a little bit different. As you could tell by the thumbnail as well as the title, this is the first day of a What I Eat in a Week series of videos. It was originally gonna be one video of What I Eat in a Week, but it just got a little bit long, so I decided to make a short series, and here I am introducing you to that series. Now this is something that I have been wanting to do for a long time on this channel. My Vegan journey initially started with a weight loss journey and trying to improve my health. But there's a difference between being vegan and being plant-based. And I was a vegan eliminating animal products to avoid harm to animals. Um, and I wasn't so much focusing on a plant-based diet, which is eating whole plant foods in order to improve my own personal health. So, based on the way that I had been feeling about food and the foods that I ate and foods that I found were triggering me to make me eat more and trying to gain control around food, um, I had realized some things and decided to conduct a little bit of an experiment, which is what this week is. Now, most whole food plant-based diets focus on starches. You eat nothing but potatoes or you eat just green vegetables and starch and it's all starch-based and it's very low fat and you lose weight by pretty much eating just a low calorie diet because plant foods that aren't nuts, seeds, and avocados don't really have any caloric density. But that didn't really work for me. It didn't sound like anything that I was interested in. So I decided to try a way of eating that I thought would satisfy me, satiate me, and hopefully through eating this way, lose a few pounds. Now, before I get any further, I'm not a dietitian, I'm not a nutritionist, I'm not a doctor, I'm not any of those things. My degrees are in English and education. Um, this is just my experience. This week is just something that I came up with, a little experiment I wanted to conduct, and I decided to film it for not only just the proof that I had done it, but, but also for the accountability that recording your meals um, has, gives. So what you're about to see here is the first day of this week. Throughout this week, I will be releasing each video. So the What I Eat in Day from Monday will be released on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and so forth. I'll also give you updates about my weight, how much I've lost uh, by weighing myself each day. And you'll basically just see every meal that I've eaten. So if you are triggered by anything that has to do with weight loss or any type of calorie restriction um, or talking numbers in terms of weight, please don't watch them. That's what this focus is. Uh, it's me trying to lose a few pounds by eating a specific way. Now, before I get into the first day, I wanna to talk to you about what my rules are and uh, what I'm not allowing myself to eat and what I'm encouraging myself to eat. So let's start with the encouragement. I found that if I eat a meal that is high in fiber, high in protein, and has a decent amount of fat, that I feel more satisfied after. So I've come up with kind of this paradigm or this model um, that most of my meals should have a grain, some type of whole grain, a bean, so that could be any type of bean, black beans, chickpeas, legumes, lentils. Uh, it could also be tofu or soy-based products as well. Uh, I want some sort of veggie for the nutritional benefits, some type of green, uh, some green component uh, for the nutritional value that green things add to foods. Uh, and then finally, some type of sauce or fat component, which is going to not only help it make it taste better, but I find that if I eat a meal that is low in fat, that I don't feel as satisfied after. So um, giving myself those fats. Now, in terms of what I'm not allowing myself to eat, cutting out all refined sugar, um, cutting out refined white flours. You're going to see me eat a lot of peanut butter toast, spoiler alert, um, but it's homemade, made with whole wheat flour. So no white flours or like white starches. And then very much limiting oil intake. So there is a little bit of olive oil throughout. I don't have a problem with that. Um, the issue with oil on a lot of diets is just that it's higher in calories and you don't get anything back from it other than um, just the fat. So uh, I tried to just limit that because I was more interested in eating avocados and peanut butter. 
So that's what this is all about, trying my own version of a plant-based diet to see how it worked for me. Um, and you'll see again each day what I've lost and follow this journey and see if it worked for me. I'm not saying that it'll work for you. If you're doing something and it's working for you, please stick with it, love it, enjoy it. But if you've tried a plant-based diet in the past and maybe the restrictions haven't necessarily worked for you, this might be another way for you to kind of look um, at how you can approach maybe some weight loss through a plant-based diet. Again, not a doctor, not a nutritionist, nothing other than a person who wanted to lose a few pounds, still wants to lose a few pounds, uh, and wanted to find a plant-based diet that worked for him. I do plan on still cooking my normally scheduled recipe content, but I would like to inter uh, introduce this type of content into my channel as well. I've wanted to go on a weight loss journey for quite a long time and document it, so this seemed like a good time to do it as we approach right before Christmas, right? Doesn't that make sense? Um, as opposed to waiting for the new year, it just kind of happened. I decided to do it. So here we are live, it's happening now. Um, but yeah, if you wanna see more content like this, please let me know. There will be a playlist for all of these if you're coming to the game after the initial week of releases is up. So there'll be a playlist of all of the videos. There will be uh, seven in total, seven days in a week. And yeah, signing off. Uh, the next thing you'll see is me with a long beard uh, on the morning of the first day, which is also Sunday. Um, it disappears rather quickly, but uh, if you're wondering who that guy is in the next clip with a long beard, it's me. This is pretty rough, early morning. It's not early. Who am I kidding? Uh, it's 9.45. Um, I've just been lazy playing some Zelda, um, but I forgot that I had some beans soaking. So I'm going to show you how I cook my beans in my Instant Pot, which is different than the whole video I have about cooking beans in an Instant Pot. Um, but I'm gonna show you how I do that just because I really like having beans around the house. I have some chickpeas still in the fridge, but I'm gonna be cooking up some white beans really versatile and you'll see everything that I do with them over the course of the next week or so. But uh, yeah, let's get the beans cooking. So I actually soak them, or have been soaking them in this really large jar. I don't know what it is, if it's a, uh, it's like eight cups, so two quart. Um, so I soak them in here and I actually have this lid on top, which is for sprouting, but it's nice so I can pour water in, pour water out. So, um, well, I'm gonna get this lid off and uh, put it in an Instant Pot, put a little water in there, and then show you how I set the Instant Pot for what I think are the perfect white beans. So I've got the water in here with the beans. If I put my finger in, the tip of my finger touches the beans, and the water comes up to my first knuckle crease. Now I'm going to hit slow cook. I'm going to adjust it to low, and then I'm actually gonna just put it on six hours just so that I can tell how long it's been. I know it doesn't make any sense, <laughs> but it's gonna go about two and a half, three, maybe up to three and a half hours. I was in such a hurry, I forgot something. I forgot uh, to add seasoning to my beans. So this is granulated mushroom bouillon. I use it a lot. Um, it's slightly controversial in the fact that it is fairly high in MSG, but uh, I think it gives great flavor to the beans. You could use just salt. You could use any type of broth that you like. Um, but I like this. I feel like it just gives a really nice flavor to the beans and the broth that is remaining with the beans um, that I usually leave the beans in in the refrigerator, but then I also drink some of it. I, eat the beans like soup with it. Uh, I just think this gives a nice flavor. So I'm gonna add a bit of this to taste. Um, it's supposed to be about a teaspoon per cup. Um, we'll see, I usually don't use that much. Uh, I just got back from a jog. I should have taken the day off and not jogged today, but I felt like I just needed to get out and do something. So I usually go for about 25 minutes, just a little over two miles. And today I made it just under 20 minutes. Uh, I gave myself a little bit of an out. I didn't try to push myself too hard just because, again, today was supposed to be a day off. But uh, my beans have been in for about an hour and 50 minutes. 
So uh, I just tasted a couple. My rule is to taste five. And if five of them are done, I take them out. I notice with beans that if they're not like super done when you take them out, put them in the fridge and go to eat them again, they seem to like firm up. Uh, after they've been in the fridge. So I like to just like push them to the like furthest extent before they're fully waterlogged and disintegrating. Uh, but I don't like them to have any grit because again, like I feel like they firm up a little bit. Um, so I'm gonna push it for 10 more minutes and then I think I should be good. I'll unplug the Instant Pot, just let them kind of hang out and cool for a few before I jar them up. Uh, it's about 11.45. Uh, I'm not really hungry yet. Um, so I'll probably eat here in a little bit and uh, I'll let you know what I eat then. So although they had to soak overnight, they did cook in two hours on slow cook and they're perfectly creamy, which I don't think you can really get if you try to do any other cooking method. So I'm going to use this slotted spoon situation to transfer the beans to this jar, um, which is just the jar that it was soaking in, or that they were soaking in. Um, and then once I get all of the beans out with the slotted spoon, and then I will top it off with the broth and any broth that's left over, I will just drink. Two cups of dry beans gave us about four and a half-ish cups of cooked beans. And you can see that I just put the liquid just right above the level of the beans. You don't need that much more in there. Um, but they continue to absorb, fla absorb flavor, absorb flavor, and they don't dry out if you store them in the cooking liquid. And then I have a mug here of the broth. Again, that's the mushroom bouillon seasoned broth with the beans. I'm sure a lot of people will say, oh my God, bean broth is so healthy. You should always drink it. It's full of nutrients. Other people will say, oh, the bean broth isn't healthy. It's got anti-nutrients or something. Who knows? I just like the taste of it. I think it's delicious and it's cozy, especially on a cold day. So I'm going to drink it and then I will be uh, cleaning this up, showering, and uh, I'll see you when I actually decide to eat a meal. It's just about one o'clock and I am finally ready to eat. I've actually, you can tell I maybe took a little bit too much off the beard, but uh, I'm ready to eat. I shaved, cleaned up, showered, straightened up the kitchen a little bit. Uh, the beans that I made earlier actually still, there they are, uh, still on the counter cooling. I haven't put them in the fridge just yet. Um, but what I'm doing here is toasting some whole wheat bread. And I know I have a toaster right there, but for some reason I'm really liking to do it on the stove top uh, in a grill pan, griddle pan. So it's whole wheat bread that I made. I'll have the recipe linked below or somewhere. Uh, it's, I just Googled whole wheat bread bread machine and I think it's a King Arthur recipe. Uh, it's just whole wheat flour. The trick to get it to kind of rise up, this is the heel of it, but the trick to get it to rise up is to add some gluten, which the recipe calls for. And I'm just flipping these with my hand. Uh, but what I'm going to be eating is peanut butter toast. And this is uh, just something that I've really loved eating. I don't know. It's like the perfect first meal. Whole wheat bread with, lately it's been crunchy peanut butter. And what I really like about it is it's good. It's got like good fiber, good protein, good fat. It's what I like to be, to, to feel satisfied, to feel satiated. It holds me for quite a while. doesn't seem to weigh me down. Um, sometimes I just have one piece. Today I'm having two. Um, but I'm very close to the end of my bread, so I'm going to be probably making another batch in the bread machine here in a minute. And that's been the thing that's, I think, most important is just setting myself up for success so that I'm not without things that I might want to eat. So um, they're always there, so that's what I always grab when I get hungry. So I'm going to finish flipping these over, spread some peanut butter on them, and I'll show you what the final product looks like. I have decided to make bread, so I actually have my bread machine preheating, and I had the recipe up here. Uh, anyway, so this bread machine actually came from a thrift store. It was about $3, and this is the same brand as my rice cooker, which I really like, and I've been using this a lot, especially to make whole wheat bread, which I'm going to be using this flour today. And uh, I also made a pizza dough last night, which I haven't tried yet, so maybe I'll be eating that later. But basically it's whole wheat flour, um, have a little bit of vital wheat gluten. I'll use about a tablespoon. Um, I'm gonna use agave as the sweetener, and then salt and of course yeast.
the recipe, as I said, I'll link it, but it uh, it's from King Arthur. It can be made in anything. I just, I love the bread machine because I don't have to think about it. I can just weigh out the ingredients, put them in there, and then I have bread in a couple of hours. Um, honestly, if you're looking to invest in a bread machine, just go to a thrift store. They always have a ton. Um, I don't know how safe y'all feel during Corona to go uh, to a thrift store, but put on your mask, put on some gloves, and go see what they have. The recipe calls for instant yeast, so this is the one I use. And then you can add a quarter cup of seeds. So I added some flax seeds, some sunflower seeds. I actually was gonna add pumpkin, but I didn't. And uh, I had some sesame seeds that I ended up adding as well. So just maybe like a tablespoon to two of each, just to get to about a quarter cup of the seeds. And it's that easy. So in about three and a half hours, I should have whole wheat bread and uh, let it cool to room temp. I always save old bread bags. So I just save it in the bread bag, usually in the fridge. Uh, and then I'll have the bread for toasts or sandwiches, whatever it is that I'll be eating over the next few days. Um, I've got some avocado, so I'll probably have some avocado toast tomorrow. Uh, we'll see what inspires me. Uh, it's now about six o'clock. I just got back from the store. I bought uh, some things for Ben and some things for myself, but I have a few things that I need to use up around here that I'm gonna eat because I'm actually pretty hungry. So I made some curry last night with chickpea, sweet potato, a bunch of random stuff. Uh, so I'm gonna reheat that, but I also have a bunch of Brussels sprouts that I bought a while ago that I need to use. So I'm actually gonna thinly cut the Brussels sprouts, heat them up, and then put the curry with it. And then I'll be serving that with some forbidden slash black rice. Why don't you show them the bread you made? Oh, I probably should. So I had shown you that I was making bread earlier and it didn't come out. Womp womp. Um, which is weird because I've made this three or four times recently and this is the worst that's come out the time that I decide to film it. It's still gonna taste good, it's just, it just didn't rise. I think the main reason is that I tried to straighten things out. Sometimes it gets a little bit big on one side, small on the other side, so I tried to straighten it out before it baked and I think I deflated it. So uh, I blame myself. Yeah, it'll, it'll still be good. Looks a little flat. I'm not sure how exactly this is gonna be, but I just shaved uh, the sprouts using this little mandolin here, and then I have my leftover curry, and then I'm gonna use some of this forbidden rice. So I'm just trying to add a little bit of color, cook these down just a little bit before I add the curry, and I'll just mix everything else in. Hopefully it comes out delicious. So I think I just actually invented something. I'll show you a better picture, but uh, I actually had, I cut basically way more uh, Brussels sprouts than I had <laughs> originally anticipated, so. Um, it's actually really good. It's like a curry Brussels sprouts. I, I don't know. It's good. So it's got sweet potato, chickpeas, curry, uh, some tofu. Um, I just basically took a can of a Thai curry paste. I thought it was Penang, but I, I don't, I forgot what it was. Um, mixed it with some water, a little bit of coconut milk, and then just added other things in and simmered it. Uh, I do have a curry recipe on my channel for like a golden curry. Um, it's pretty much that same recipe with just a different curry paste. So I'm gonna eat this and uh, feel like it'll hold me for quite a while and I'm really excited to eat it. Actually, I put a little chili oil on top too. So let's dig in. This is truly so good. Like I'm really impressed. I, I do think I invented a new recipe, curried uh, Brussels sprouts. It's uh, not very attractive, but and the black rice, like, it's forbidden rice from, ooh, I forget the company, but it's my current obsession. Like, I just love this forbidden rice. It's really chewy, nice, like kind of a shorter grain black rice. So good. So one of the blessings slash curses of uh, filming a what I eat in a day slash week video is that you gotta document everything that you're eating. And uh, it's about, 11 o'clock at night and I'm a little bit hungry. I don't know if I'm snacky or if I wanna like eat, eat something. So um, I'm gonna kind of meet in the middle and I'm gonna slice into the loaf of bread that I made that didn't turn out great. And uh, I'm gonna mix some avocado with some of the white beans that I made earlier. Sort of an avocado toast, sort of a bean toast, but uh, yeah, just mix the avocado and the beans together, put it on the bread. I don't think I'm gonna toast it even. So I'm gonna go back into the living room and finish watching uh, Real Housewives. And uh, I just have the avocado and beans and then slices of bread. I, I actually eat uh, pretty late most of the times. I don't, most of the times, most nights I eat fairly late. I feel like I sleep better 
um, if I eat later. And then uh, I usually like don't eat until early afternoon um, the next day, so I guess it evens out. Um, yeah, as you saw, I guess, from earlier this morning. So I'm gonna eat this, and then uh, I'll probably be in bed shortly after that. Ryan Little. <laughs> Little.